If you want to start making music using samples, you can either buy hardware that costs hundreds or you can use software like Koala, which has got a really low price. But how much do you really get for that first low price? Aren't there add-ons? Aren't there sample packs to buy? Don't you need to upgrade your hardware? Let's have a look and see what it really costs. So the base price of Koala depends on which country you're in. It's $5 in America, it's £5 in the UK, it's $7.50 in Singapore, where I am now. Um, but it's basically the price of a latte in Starbucks. So wherever you are, that's a pretty good marker. And that's pretty cheap, isn't it? Because the amount of things you can do with Koala are pretty huge, and it's comparable to something like an SP404 or a KO22 hardware. But it's not the only price you pay. There are some add-ons. The history of Koala is pretty much that the base model that you get when you first start, that's what came out first. The first thing that was developed could only do those things. And then all the other functionality came along later. So it's not a case of, you know, all these features came out and they were locked behind price increases. That's not how it worked at all. And I think people who are coming into Koala now will get a certain way down the path of what they can do with it. And then all of a sudden, bang, another price pops up and that can feel like you're being cheated. I really don't think that's the case. I think the development of the product is really fair. But anyway, let's look at what you can do just with that base model. So with that basic caller, then you can record using the microphone, you can input musical instruments, do an interface, and you can grab things on screenshot, screen record, stuff like YouTube clips, and then use those to sample in the records. But all of that kind of sampling stuff where you're just grabbing a source and then playing it back all of that stuff works in the base level koala you can do the samples you can edit the samples so you trim a bit off the front trim a bit off the back you can speed it up you can slow it down and then you can have a sequence where you play those things in order all that stuff is there and it all sounds great you can also add effects to that playback stuff so if you want to add a delay effect to everything a reverb effect to everything you can do that you can then resample that stuff back in. So let's say you just want to add delay on a drum sample. You just play that drum sample back, add the effect to it, re-record it back into Koala, resampling, and then have that as one of your samples as well. So all of that stuff is in there. And just that functionality is enough to have hours and hours of, of playing around, making different things, making new sequences, building those things up into a song. You can play with that aspect of Koala for months and months and months. And I did, because when that first came out, when Koala first came out, that's all it could do. And it was great. Where you start to hit limitations is if you've got a long sample and you want to take little chunks out of that sample. So what you do is you load up the sample and then you can either divide it equally. So let's say you divide that whole thing into four, or you can look for the transients where there are peaks and troughs and it can have a guess of where the, let's be honest, drum beats are in that sample, or I guess, little vocal words and syllables, or you can do it yourself in what they call the lazy chopping, where you play the sample and then hit the space bar or hit the button every time you want to drop a little marker to create a new sample. Trying to do that with Bluetooth headphones is an absolute nightmare. I recommend you don't do that, especially if you're sat on a bus. Once you've got that then, once you've done that, it will drop each one of those into a separate sample for you, which saves a lot of time if you're the sort of person who's going to take a break beat and be chopping that up and then re-triggering those different bits. There are whole genres built on that. Breakbeat, drum and bass, jungle, all uses this technique. Boom Bap Hip Hop does a lot of this as well. So for some people, this was a massive time saver and a massive game changer, and they were very happy to pay the price of, once again, a single latte from Starbucks to use that. So this update was called Samurai because it involved lots of chopping things up like a samurai guy does with the sword thing. Sorry, I forgot the names of it wrong. What it also gave you, though, was the ability to stretch samples. So if you've got one sample and you want it to last a whole bar, or you want to really stretch it out and make it two bars, you could do that as well. You could do that in a few different ways that sounded different. I made a video all about a record called Rip Groove by Double 99, where I really went into that in some detail. So I'm not going to go into that again. But that's not all you got with Samurai. You also got the ability to control other synthesizers using MIDI out. Again, I made another video about that, so I'm not going to go into it now. And you got a synthesizer, like an actual full-blown synth that you could play directly from Koala using the sequencer. It's called Quokka. I use it all the time. 
and it was a freebie that came along months after the original Samurai update. I think this is why I find it hard to swallow when you get criticism of Koala and people saying, you know, it's kind of expensive. You have to pay three times for one thing. Why couldn't it all just be in the same bundle? Like I bought Samurai because the stuff that was released in it was worth it to me for the price of a latte. And then just after Christmas last year, this year, we were told by the developer, Marek, oh, by the way, you guys are going to get something new coming along. It'll download automatically. Don't worry about it. And then this massive synthesizer dropped. I'm not going to bang on about it. It's great value, but let's crack on. The second and so far latest paid update to Koala then is called Mixer. And that allows you to take individual parts of a track that you put together and apply effects just to those individual parts. If you want the drums to have a flange effect on them, or you want the synth to have a, a bit cooker effect, or you want the vocals to have chorus or whatever on it, you can separate those parts out and just put effects on those rather than have effects on the whole thing. It's pretty amazing. It sounds like a fairly simple thing, but actually it makes a massive difference. And let's see if you can guess the price of that upgrade. Have a little think. In fact, first of all, subscribe leave a comment and then tell me, you know, it's one latte. It's always one latte. So for the price of three coffees so far, you've got one of the best pieces of software you could hope to have for making music that runs on your phone. I've turned the air conditioner off. I'm getting hot and bothered. But I just want to tell you, please don't complain to me about the price of Koala because it's well worth it. So just a final couple of words then on sample packs and hardware. First of all, sample packs are available. They are kind of built into the app now. You can buy them really easily. They cost less than a latte, but really they're optional. Look, if you want to buy some extra samples and some different sounds for Quokka, yeah, go ahead. Buy a sample pack, see if you like it. The other is hardware. Currently, Koala Sampler runs on iOS 11 as a minimum. Now, iOS 11 is taking you down to something like the iPhone 5S or the iPad Mini 2. I don't know how much you know about iPads, but those are some sh hardware. You can buy one of those things for, let's say, $20. Let's say four lattes, whatever it is. Have a look at the price of some of the hardware that can run Koala because you really don't need anything particularly stand out. Android, very similar. It's just a bit harder to tell because Android models are all over the place, aren't they? You can also run Koala on Windows and on Mac OS, and there they don't charge for Koala. So you can always have a go, see if you like it. I think the interface works a lot better on the touch screen of an iPad, a tablet, a phone. It's not really built for a desktop or a laptop, but you know what? Give it a go, it's free. And please do, because I can't think of any app that's given me more fun than Koala. And let's face it, I've made about a million hours worth of videos about it already, so you know I'm telling the truth. Let me know your experiences with Koala. Have a look at some of those other videos if you want to, and see you later.